So I wanted to do a test on the flow rates of the different intake manifolds. So we've got three intake manifolds here, an old school 3.1 multi-port injected one from the late 80s, early 90s. It would be the same as the old 2.8 from I think 87 on. Then we went to the next generation where we went to this style. Uh, the early 3100s were slightly smaller, but same general idea. Then we went to the 3400, which had a bigger plenum. Then they actually the 3500, which had an even bigger plenum and flowed more from what I understand. And then there's the one that uh, me and my brother built. And I want to see what the flow rates kind of are. I'm going to do this test in two different ways. I'm going to use a leaf blower to simulate boost. And I'm just going to ch check air distribution to all the cylinders at the same time. So, and the way I'm going to do that is using this here, just a cheap... Uh, Wind meter and a monomer, I'm going to say that wrong, from Amazon, I think it was like $15. And we're going to see what the air coming out of each port is as it's blowing through air. Of course, this is only going to be simulating boost, um, but it should give us an idea what the air distribution is between all of them. After that, I want to do a test where we block off all but one port and see how each port flows individually but for that, I've got to use my shop vac because the leaf blower just blows too much air for this uh, wind meter. So I'll get this set up and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm starting with the old school 3.1 intake manifold. I've got it flipped upside down. I've got the leaf blower hooked up there. I've got the throttle wired wide open. And we're gonna see what this thing shows here. So we're gonna see what this thing can do. Turn it on here. So I went back and looked at the video and I also uh, just ran the test quickly again just to make sure I knew what I was talking about here. Um, but yeah, I had 22, 13, 4, and these are meters per second. Uh, 20, I think, on that one. 13 again. And this one also had about 20, number 6, which is really weird, but uh, 5 was definitely uh, not getting the same amount of air. So the cylinders at the back were... Uh, it's all about air coming in here. Cylinders at the back are getting more air. They're going to be leaning out. Um, again, just based on this. Obviously, it doesn't suck air through all the ports at the same time. I understand that. And that's the first thing everybody's going to say. But it's just a good example of unequal air distribution in these old school intake manifolds. Uh, we'll see how that 3400 one does and see if they improve the design from GM later on down the road. Uh, we've got the 3400 intake now. Same cylinder configuration. Two, four, six. One, three, five. And uh, we'll turn this on. So as you can see, this uh, 3400 intake is already way better air distribution than the than the old uh, school 3.1 sitting over there. Um, but again, not surprising. It makes way more horsepower on the 3400 than it did on the old 3.1. And it's, uh, a lot of guys are getting really good numbers out of these things with, uh, with especially under boost uh, conditions. So I'm not surprised by that at all. Um, now we're going to uh, flip that one over and we're going to see what that one does. See if my uh, theories prove correct. So test number three with my custom built uh, 3.1 plenum, or sorry, intake manifold. And 
I'm not sure how this is going to go. I've not done this test before. I know how I want it to go, but we will see. Um, I think it might vary side to side, just based on the way the tubes go into the side plenums there. But we will test it out and we'll see what happens. As you can see by that there was uh some differences between the 3400 over there it definitely flowed better than the 3.1 over there but it still uh wasn't as even as i was hoping it was going to be uh between the 3400 and this one the number one two yeah, one two and three were almost the same four dropped off quite a bit it was down to about eight i think it was um but five and six picked up over the 3400 so five and six were flowing better but four dropped off, which is uh, surprising, cause, uh, especially considering this one was not bad. This one, I think, was about 11, and it's a middle port off the off the back side there. But this is a middle port off the other one, but it was flowing less, which is uh, surprising on that one. Now, my thoughts on that is that because these pipes going from the center plenum here, so I don't, you can't see really upside down here, but there's the center plenum goes off the throttle body through the center plenum, this is, there's one back by the, closer to the back wall over here that feeds that one, I think, if I'm looking at this right. Yeah, and it feeds that back, that back one. And then, so it'll get more air first because it hits that back wall and then goes into that port where this one is the second, is a little bit farther away from that back wall. So it doesn't get quite as much air. And that's what I was assuming was going to happen with the, but I didn't expect number four to be, which four feeds off of this here. I wasn't expecting that one to be that much less than the other ones. It is still better, again, than the 3.1 original intake by a long shot, but now we are going to the test where we block off each port, then we'll uh, see. I might even try it with this one just because it's already hooked up. We'll see if it works with that one or not. So like I was worried about, though, the uh, leaf blower just puts out too much air when you start blocking off all the ports. Uh, so as you can see, I've got this super awesome yellow duct tape on uh, each port except for uh, port number one. So I'm literally going to measure the flow on each port with the other ports blocked off. Uh, and we'll see uh, how each port compares to each other. And again, we should, what we're looking for here is hopefully have the same flow to each port and we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm probably not going to show you each one of them just to save time and your boredom because <laughs> It's not exactly a fun thing to watch. the process i'm going to be using i'll go through these other two intakes here do the same thing um, i'm not going to make you sit and watch through that boring crap but i'll post the numbers up and uh, so you can see all the different uh, numbers between all three intakes and how they did on each different port and then i'll uh, come back to you once that's done So these are the numbers I came up with using my anemometer, if I'm saying that correctly. I realize it's not a proper flow bench, so please uh, feel free to prove me wrong. Tell me I'm doing something incorrectly. Tell me I'm, if you like what I'm doing. Um, but this is uh, what I've got using the resources I have available to me, so I uh, hope you like it. 
So that's my uh, video on my intake manifold testing so for the uh, 60 degree engines. Again, this is all kind of just based on boost, based on uh, multi-port injected type stuff on these uh, things. But all of them were done with the same stuff. Just my old shop vac, not even with the, on the base, just sitting there open so it can flow as much as possible. And uh, as you can see, the 3400 intake, this one right in front of me, does pretty darn good. It's actually almost as good as the one I built. I'm quite happy to say that, that one's just a little bit better, but definitely GM knew that the 3.1 didn't flow very well and they improved it with the 3400, 3100 series engines and, uh, and they just kept getting better after that. Thanks for watching guys. I uh, may do another video yet on uh, intake manifold theory and design. Just uh, still working on some things there. I uh, figured though after I blew up the 3.1, it was a good chance to uh, do the testing on these things and uh, let you guys see kind of what we've got available to us. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.